Hello everyone. How are you doing? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So you all know we have a special guest with us. With it, right? How many of you love playing chess here? Tell me quickly. Tell me quickly. Yes. And hello with it. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. How so you? how are you feeling? Please let us know. Um, I actually. Recently, I have been sleeping late and waking up late due to tournaments. So after a long time, I've woken up early. So I feel great actually. You know, the early morning and also the weather is kind of nice. It's raining outside. Oh yeah, yeah, that's great. So let's see some of the students who are saying, "I love chess." Purva, Sucha, Bhavesh, Prabhu, Divya, the Ganesh, Bollywood music. Okay, yes. Yes, we have started already. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, hello. Good morning, everyone. Yes. So, for the students who do not know, I'm very sure everyone would be knowing who is with it because even if I wasn't a chess uh, enthusiast, I knew with it. So, everyone would be knowing who is with it. But still, for that point, zero, 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 one percentage of the students who do not know who is with it, let me introduce. Who is with it? So with it started playing chess at a very young age of seven years. Since then he has won four medals at national youth championships, four silver silver medals at Asian youth championships, three medals at world world uh, youth championships. He has also started. Rep, uh, he also uh, represented at various international events and in the uh, and also he's the winner of. Five major international grandmaster events: Bale, Malmo, Tata Steel, Lake Seven, Prague. He is currently ranked third in India, twenty fourth in the world, and we all are very proud about the fact that you know in August twenty twenty, Vidit was the captain of the Indian chess team that won the historic gold at FID Online Chess Olympiad. This was the first gold for India at the Chess Olympiad. The previous best being bronze medal in 2014. Oh my God! So many things, and I, I don't know. I I'm just excited to ask a lot of questions to Vidit. I'm very sure even students also damn excited. Yes, Vidit sir, Vidit sir, OP. Yes, OP, OP, OP in the comments. So, Vidit, how are you feeling? Like I am excited to. Get this questions from the students and sir, you have you have lot of fans. I'm big fan of Vidit sir. Sucha is saying. Oh, thank you. And I think you know the best thing is that uh, many of them are already dedicated to self improvement. So they woke up, they joined the stream, even if it's early in the morning. That mm. shows like it's a sign that mm. they want to improve, and that's the first step any student has to take. To show that eagerness, and then the next steps automatically follow. So I'm very glad that so many people have joined in so early in the morning. Okay, so let's quickly begin with the questions that I have, and uh, you know the whole uh, I can say the group of students will be having. Yes, yes, many of you consider you as in inspiration with this. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, so the very first question I uh, we all have is why chess. and how it happened like how did it happen so it was complete accident how it happened um it was not planned like my father and mother they both are doctors so they i used to be i used to trouble them a lot because you know i used to be at home and i they thought okay i should be engaged in some activity or the other so i was very much into sports when i was very young i loved playing cricket like every other indian kid so i went to join a club in cricket but they said no he's too young and i also looked very small when i was young like 5 years 6 years something like this so they said that the ball might hit you and you might get hurt physically so no we can't allow you to play cricket just yet so till then join some other sport so their options was badminton and chess and i used to play chess with my parents at home so i thought okay this is a great opportunity to defeat my dad because i always lost to him and i hated losing since beginning like my personality was like that so i thought okay let's start playing chess here and i got so interested that i never left it i think uh, it was just an accident but one of the best accidents it could have happened okay that's great so some students are asking me to talk about chess i don't know why students i'm vindhya rao i teach biology you know 
so i i may not be knowing much about uh, chess but don't worry uh, sir will be vidit sir will be telling you the tips and tricks uh, uh, you know how to deal with the uh, chess and everything and now coming to the second question sir your your parents are doctors and you are playing chess so how did they allow you to take this as career options because parents will be having this you know it j doctor engineer this is this is common in all indian parents like i i know most of the indian parents at least so how did they agree and you know when did you think that you should be taking chess as the career option uh, that's a good question actually it's funny i think every uh, indian kid has some kind of passion or interest apart from studies i think all the students here will agree that they want to uh, studies is important but also apart from it they want to do something else something extra and that's where their interest lies but it many times happens that the parents uh, don't really want them to pursue due to they don't know if they'll have career options uh, if you go like you know if you pursue it will it be a good career option so luckily my parents were very supportive um especially my dad he was like okay if you want to do chess do chess my mom still wanted me to do mba after becoming a grandmaster so you know it's still so deep rooted in indian parent psychology that um it's out of security for the kids but i think one thing i would say if any of the students have any extracurricular passion and they want to pursue it and they want to convince the parents the first thing which they should do is have complete uh, sincerity in what they are doing so parents will see it oh my kid is really interested in this you know it's not a joke it's not just because he wants to avoid studies he really uh, is passionate about the hobby and then they would see that and he is happy doing it so that's the first step the sincerity uh, towards any other thing and then the second step lies in you know conveying that sincerity to the parents so the same thing happened with my dad he saw that you know i was really into chess like i once lost a game and i wanted to finish a book i was like okay no i'll read and i'll not lose the game again so i locked myself in the room read the entire book and then only i came out so he saw that i had some passion and he thought okay it would be a crime not to let him pursue so i think uh, it should help the other kids as well true so i guess even determination is also very important because many kids nowadays like in the again say in the present generation they are into many things like chess dancing singing you know they they are not very serious about it i guess when the when the parents see that seriousness in one particular thing that they are doing i guess they too will be supporting and another one question uh, i have to ask you as a teacher how chess is going to help in academics um many many ways first of all like whenever i used to play chess uh, and if i lost i used to be i used to cry actually so <laughs> i'm not very uh, proud to say that but I, it used to be like that because i really hated losing and this is the first thing which chess taught me is how to handle failures because we played so many games thousands and thousands of games and losing is inevitable even if you're world champion you will indeed lose so chess taught me this basic thing that okay how to handle failures on a regular basis and it just uh, is like you know crash course or mini crash course on life in some ways and the second thing is concentration so for studies i didn't really need to have to focus a lot because chess automatically built up my concentration the ability to sit in one place and be focused on one task so that's why i'm very bad at multitasking let's say if i'm uh, many times i'm talking with my friends and suddenly i'll get a message and i'll completely zone out of what i'm speaking with friends so i'm very bad at multitasking that's because my focus on one thing just got better due to playing chess and i think anyone who does it will definitely get these qualities also planning because chess requires a lot of planning anticipating your opponent's moves so in life also you plan certain things out you anticipate what can happen what can go wrong you prepare for the worst so i think chess as a whole teaches you a lot of great qualities it takes time it's not like you play chess and immediately your concentration is great but if you stick with it over a period of time your concentration level definitely increases so this is very true because i too have a lot of uh, you know students of mine who are good at chess at the same time they are also good in studies 
so i do have seen that they are uh, they are able to better absorb the things maybe they are able to better concentrate cause of chess so that's the great thing and also you said about planning planning is very important when you're going to choose uh, anything as a, a career also for any exams planning making time tables are very important so thank you so much for that inputs and many students have so many questions and students please wait for some time we will be taking all of your questions and also will be coming to the tips and tricks that is you know uh, how to deal with the chess and everything so don't worry okay yes so the next question everyone will be having how did you become grandmaster so how was the journey it was a very long journey i would say uh, i started playing chess when i was 7 years old um and i became grandmaster at the age of 18 so it took me really long time uh it was funny how it even started like the first tournament i played i went with my father to a state championship and they didn't allow parents in the playing arena so uh naturally i was like first time away from home and i didn't see my dad and i just resigned the first chess game that i played and then from there to become a grandmaster was a big journey i think the main key points was winning the national championship uh, once i won the national championship my parents knew that okay uh, you know this can lead to somewhere then i won the next and the next you know i think it just fueled my desire more but it was not like very easy uh i was stagnated at some point and i was worried should i quit chess and should i pursue studies my parents were also confused uh but that's what like sometimes success takes a lot of persistence and you need a lot of patience it won't happen immediately that's what it is i think nowadays that we expect immediate rewards we do one thing we immediately should feel that okay this this was a success but no actually sticking with it for a long time makes a big difference i think there is a quote uh, which is one of my favorite quote it says um uh, an average man uh, with a persistent effort uh, is uh, way better than uh, a talented but a lazy man you know so yeah, yeah. even this if you're common yeah yeah so i think even if you're i guess the think, talent uh, uh, the hard work will beat when the talent doesn't work hard this is also very common quote yes 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 exactly so i feel like even if you think that you are not very smart but if you stick with it for a long time you will definitely outwork the guy who is like talented but you know lazy true true this is very true so many students have this particular question i guess i will be taking few questions because you know i'm bored yes. with the questions from sure. the students. sir who is your inspiration many students are asking who is your inspiration so please answer this question for everyone it's funny uh, there is world champion magnus carlsen who is world champion right now when he was very young he was asked who is his idol and i was very surprised to find his answer he said himself and I, my coach that time thought it's very arrogant but it also makes sense that he later on clarified that he draws inspiration from many of the world champions which existed but he doesn't idolize anyone because then you stop your original thinking so i found this way of uh, approaching things really really interesting and i also try to take inspiration from many people like uh, for example uh, i was reading the book of nadal and the way he prepared michael phelps you know who has won so many gold medals in olympics so i took inspiration from him but never idolize anyone because you should have your own original thought you take the best out of everyone but don't idolize anyone okay so talking about carlson so you have played with carlson as well as you know uh, vishwanath anand so uh, which was more exciting and which was the more nervous contest mm, i have played them on multiple occasions i don't think i was really nervous because when you are playing against the world's best and you are the underdog there is no pressure on you like if you do well it's great then everyone feels like it's uh, you know unexpected but even if you don't do well they are like okay yeah he was world champion he lost to world champion so for me that time there is no pressure but the situation where you are playing someone who is weaker than you that's when there is a real pressure or tension because if you lose you will be ridiculed oh how you lost to a weaker player i think those are more crucial uh, moments 
but of course it was exciting to play magnus carlsen uh because he's the world champion you know in any sport if you play the world champion you're excited like wow that's a great opportunity okay so uh talking more about uh, i mean with carlsen i can say so uh, in the chess the the shortest the the shortest uh, the shortest chess game is kind of you know fairy tale in the chess books i can say so can you elaborate uh, with it uh, with it and carlsen you had a uh, you know uh, i can say a game and he has announced uh, i can say the draw so how was your reaction when he the world champion announced uh, you know draw with you no it was funny like i have uh, played him in many tournaments and we had drawn beforehand but this video went viral it has i think what 45 million views or something it was just uh, he had come to india and he he offered me a draw after move 4 or 5 and which was very surprising uh, i of course accepted because uh, for me it was a great result <laughs> and uh, he he just had like you know he wasn't feeling well actually and but people didn't realize what happened and the video went viral that's why it's like having 45 million views or something like that but yes okay. apart from it we have drawn uh, on multiple occasions okay so first of all let me tell uh, for the students the session has already been started and uh, we also have uh, you know had lot of conversation also i had asked lot of questions to with it that we had and definitely all of your questions will be taken up one by one so one more common question i'm getting i don't know how you will be answering it friends are asking what is your common move in the chess uh i think there are some type of chess strategies which are well known so they are called this openings so there was one opening which used to be very risky in but it also uh was very rewarding and it's called the sicilian defense so in childhood i always was going for like you know more risk uh and it always paid off so sicilian defense would be uh one of my favorite openings great so i guess gautam got his answer next question pragun is asking question from that time so how to get fid rating sure i think uh everyone who is watching will want to get a uh, fide rating so that's basically like uh, you are ranked by the world chess federation and for that what one needs to do is play a tournament which is a fide rated tournament like it will be known in the title of the tournament itself and in that depending on how you play so let's say if you defeat a very high rated player you will get a higher rating but if you make a draw you will get a low rating and if you defeat a low rated player you will get rating according to your performance uh, so right now magnus carlsen who is the world number 1 has fide rating of for 2850 or something like this and the lowest rating you can possibly get is now even 1000 rating so it's ranges from 1000 to 2850 great so one of the student is asking um, what is your uh, you know time table or as such like when it comes to playing the chess like how uh, what is your schedule about you know chess in a day um that's a good question so right now what i do is um i try to <clears throat> i i've noticed that whenever i wake up earlier than usual my day goes better the schedule is much better so in the morning after i get ready i start uh chess or some important activity right there if i try to at least i start my coaching session and i notice that if you have your mornings very productive it makes a big difference because we have a tendency to get up and just check the phone and it's a loop if you get stuck in it you will just be lost and then your entire day is unproductive so from if i have to give one advice would be to start the day with something productive and that will fuel their confidence for the rest of the day as well so um even if it's for 5 or 10 minutes you know do something productive in the morning so that's what i start, try to do and then in the evenings uh, after lunch i try to relax a bit and then in the evenings i f- do physical workout almost every single day sometimes i take a break but it's quite regular and in that i run for 20 minutes then i do weights lifting for 20 minutes 
and then yoga for some time so i have decided to focus on my physical health in the evenings and in the night of course i again play some games uh, or you know hang out with my family and stuff like that i think everything is important you you need to have a balanced life i feel true i guess yashashree got a uh, answer for her question so the next question students move have also we all had that uh, which chess movement would be uh, would you describe as a life changing event for you i can say which is that exciting moment in the chess um so there was this world championship match which i first qualified uh, it was for under 12 and it was in 2006 so i went there and it was complete new for me like you know so many foreign people and uh, all of them coming with their coaches it was very intimidating uh, i played there i was one of the favorites but i did not win the tournament i came i think 7th 8th something like this which was a shocker for me it was a wake up call then in the next world championship 2007 under 14 i went there i was leading the tournament uh, i was on top i defeated the russian grandmaster and i thought okay it's in my grasp but i spoiled it in the end i got nervous my hands were shaking and in the crucial moments i lost it so again second time i did not win the world championship under 14 and third time i went and then finally i managed to win the under 14 world championship so for me it was important to stick there try every single time and eventually the result came so the first time winning gold medal in world championship was a big deal and also the first prize was a laptop with the gold medal so as a kid i really wanted a laptop so i think that's one of the moments which i really remember fondly great i guess for three four questions uh, you have answered because many students were asking what was your struggle sir because you, you have already explained what is your struggle so many of them have already got the answer for the question and uh, pravin is asking how physical activity will help in playing chess do, do it really help you like i i, I don't know so please elaborate about it i think physical activity in general help you uh, have a better life so for example i realized the importance of physical activity um quite late in in a way so i always used to play sports in my school days and early college days so i never really faced problems but due to just sitting in one place especially the lifestyle we live now i started to have some health problems and that was a wake up call oh you know i'm just like everybody is now at home we are sitting all day long and even if it doesn't really help you uh, it's really damaging you uh, so physical health is extremely important to do anything be it sport study or even if you want to be happy you need to have good health and i think it's one of my top priorities now to focus on health it will be mental health and physical health as well so everything else like even if you don't practice chess i would still say everyone please do some kind of physical activity and you will notice the results later on in their life um especially like if i i was playing video games in my uh, school days for example i didn't really notice the effect immediately but then i noticed in my chess career that oh i'm getting the results a bit later because i was wasting some of my time and physical activity will also have the same effect you will not notice the results immediately but when they'll be in their early 30s and stuff and they will have much fit lifestyle then they would really uh, realize its importance also when we work out we feel really good in the moment because our bodies release uh, all those uh, chemicals yeah dopamine yeah, Dop- yeah. so i can say physical uh, exercise is just not important for chess for anything if you are thinking about maybe any random exams or any games or Uh, i can say even uh, actors like you know uh, they they all do this so it, it's very important so that is you know you shouldn't be asking that question because you have to do it we should be doing it and the next question a student is asking how himanshi gupta is asking so how chess will refresh your mind mm mm-hmm. that's a Anyone's good one's mind in the sense that's a good question uh, first of all i think um, if you do any activity and you are completely involved in the activity and you are enjoying it uh, the scientists say that you are in a state of flow and that's one kind of happiness there is a, there have been lot of studies about it so when i'm playing chess what happens is i get engaged in the activity quite a lot and i'm thinking 
<clears throat> and as you uh, know you know uh, when we find a solution to some kind of a problem uh, our brain will release some chemicals as you said dopamine you know it will there'll be dopamine hit when you solve a puzzle correctly you are happy and your brain rewards you so it's chess is like unlimited puzzles and you're solving one problem after the other and it's also sport so it's engaging plus also uh, stimulating the brain so for me that's the fun part whenever we focus on the results oh i'm losing i'm losing losing that's when the fun is gone but when you just take the sport as a sport like uh, you know solving the puzzles or playing something interesting out calculating my opponent you know that's that gives you a very good feeling so for me that's refreshing uh. okay lot of tons of questions and literally literally confused what to ask <laughs> so let's come to some fun uh, questions that uh, we all have so uh, what is your favorite pastime favorite pastime mm. in school days i love used to love play used to play video games a lot uh, one of my like you know bad habits um now i like to surf on youtube or watch some uh, movies sometime um but yeah, i think youtube is my past time like whenever i have free time i go to youtube because there's so much uh, information entertainment available and once sometimes when i'm feeling lazy i just go there and uh, watch something great so uh, next question from the students will take up sir where you nervous when you played chess have you ever felt nervous when you played chess all the time all the time even now oh. even if i play against uh, any opponent there will be some kind of nervousness before a game without a doubt even um, world champion feels it i think it's a good kind of nervousness i think that's how our body strain it doesn't matter who i'm playing i mean if it's serious competition of course not like a, a casual match if it's a serious competition there will be some nervousness because there is always a f- you're a little bit afraid of losing somewhere and it's good because it helps you p- prepare more otherwise without that ang- anxiety you can't really like if for example if you're not nervous you will not study and you will if you're not anxious very true thank you so much for saying that that's very true it's important to have a little bit of stress yes please continue sir yeah no that's that's what i was going to say exactly so that is the uh, i i really like that message it's very important to have a little bit of stress because you know we say be stress free stress free that's true like ha huh, you should be stress free but when it comes to certain exams only if you are nervous only if you have a fear of something only if you are little stressed you feel like studying it and you know you will go to study it okay i mean this is about the exam i'm talking about i can say in anything if you have the fear of if we have the fear of losing you know we will be uh, you know working for it and that's very important and the next question if not chess if not chess which other profession or sports that you know you would have picked up uh i would have liked to become a detective because i like Ooh. solving mysteries uh but i don't think i would have liked to become a detective in india because it's a very tough job probably you know in some other countries where it's a better uh, way of looking at things or i would have become a scientist and try to research something because those two are my favorite areas great so um lot lot questions so we will be taking up all the questions don't worry um uh, another question that we all have uh, any piece of advice that you have to give for the kids uh, to take up chess or any sports as a profession so what is going to be that advice by you mm, i w- i i would like to ask actually like the uh, who everyone is watching what is their passion first of all and if they can type in it like apart from studies what else they want to do because first having that clarity is important oh i do i really want to do this and i would love to see their answers like do they want to pursue chess or what are their passions in general um so students so, started answering chess <laughs> chess pilot cricket to become a coder poker drawing chess 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 oh no. <laughs> that's uh, that's amazing to know actually that so many of them want, Singer, want to do different things yeah that's great so once uh, they know what they want to do um it's great that first clarity is important and i'll just share the quote which i have on my uh, desktop wallpaper because that serves as a reminder for me and that i think would perfectly answer this question 
So the quote is, it's a bit of a longer quote, but I took it from an article. So it says, do you want to lose weight or start that company? Stop thinking and start doing. And once you start, work hard, very hard, very, very hard. Forget and give up everything else. If you're serious about it, then all your energy must be devoted to your goal. It sounds harsh, but that's the price you have to pay. Remind yourself that the clock is ticking because time is, you know, the most limited thing. Uh, and if you spend your time on things that don't matter, you won't have any time left for the things that do matter. Stop dreaming and start walking. Keep walking. And your resistance will disappear as rain clouds do after a heavy uh, downpour. So just value the time and it's limited time. So if you're, if you know clearly that you want to become this, if you want to become chess player, then devote all their energy to becoming a chess player. If they want to uh, become a singer, then, you know, devote all the energy, take lessons, you know, learn from YouTube, take help from coaches, you know, everything. And if they just follow that path, because many of the time we are just dreaming that I want to do this. I want to do this. But if you start taking action, the results will come. And that's the most important thing I would say. Very true. This is so I, we all have to tell to the students, students don't think I'll learn tomorrow. I will study tomorrow. Do it today itself. Just, just start it. So that's what Vidit sir also want to say. And another exciting question I could see from the students. Have you, uh, you know, uh, do you have, uh, have you ever experienced unexpected win? So uh, was there any, uh, you know, time where you thought you will lose and you have won? Yeah, it has happened. And those are one of the best moments because you have already kind of uh, given up and you're not expecting. It's like a bonus uh, you get at work or, you know, it's some, something extra. You always like it. Like if you go to a restaurant and they give you a complimentary dessert, you're always very happy. So it's like that. You didn't expect that win, but you still got it. Many, many occasions. Okay. So Pravin is asking who is the first grandmaster you defeated. So he's asking from past <laughs> 20 minutes. So first grandmaster I defeated, um, I don't really recall the first one, but I remember one memorable win against grandmaster. He was from Sweden and the game was beautiful. Like I sacrificed pieces and I won, but also his name was really intriguing. His name was tiger. So I, it felt like, you know, I defeated a very strong grandmaster. He had this personality. His name was tiger. So <laughs> he was one of the first grandmasters I won against. Okay. So, uh, Sri Karthik is asking, sir, you have lost, uh, you have lost the Mr. Dodgy Invitational 2 this month. How did you feel about it? Oh, I have to ask the question related to such question. So, how do you deal with the failure? It's very important for the present day students because, you know, we, we just love winning. It's very important to deal with the failure as well. So, please answer how do you, you know, face the failure? So, yes, the tournament he is mentioning, we just finished uh, yesterday. Um, so I was, I went till the semifinals, but I lost in the semifinals uh, against Georgian Grandmaster. So that's what he is referring to. And I, to be honest, in my childhood, I was really, really bad at handling failures. I used to throw tantrums after losing. I really got very upset, got angry. Um, but later on, what I did, one thing which I did well, even though I was very angry, I used to channelize it. So my anger used to go in, okay, let me now prepare so hard that next time such a situation doesn't come. And my mom used to, whenever I'm upset, she used to take me to a bookstore and I used to buy books. And I was like, okay, how dare I lose this? You know, I'll read everything now and next time I'll defeat. So there are two ways, like you can get angry and throw things and then nothing productive will come. I th threw things, but then of course I channelized uh, the energy as well in studying. Uh, but it's very hard because um, it's not very easy because you're of course upset because you want to win. Everybody who is playing any sport wants to win and nobody likes to lose. Uh, so even world champion, you will see him after losing, he'll be upset. So it's natural. So one thing which I try to do now is be even when I'm like in an even mindset. If I win, it's okay. Even if I lose, it's okay. Uh, but it's important to be in the growth mindset. This is a term um, coined by a scientist in US. So the thing is, growth mindset is like, okay, what do I learn from this? You know, if we stop learning, we stop growing. So when we lose, 
and now i what what i do is i go through the games how this mistake happened and then i learn from it i feel good i already feel better that i learned something and next time it won't happen it's a long journey uh, but to be in the constant learning mindset growth mindset is very very important there was a period of time where i did not analyze my losses and i was having the same level for years and i realized something is wrong so then i started analyzing those games uh, trying to learn from the mistakes and then over a period of time you know my results went up and up so that was one big learning always be in the growth mindset try to learn every day and also this you know uh, it's it's okay if you do mistakes so do do different mistake not the same mistake again and again exactly it's like uh, it's okay to do mistakes but not the same mistakes uh, again exactly okay so there is a small request uh, can you just come to the middle of the screen yeah sure yeah thank you so much yeah so a lot of questions we will be taking the questions but in between i would uh, uh, like to take up this particular question that all the students are asking please give the tips and tricks for the chess um for chess okay mm. there are many many things that they can do first of all i would say from my experience that um don't waste time because it's so important when i was i think 15 to 18 i wasted lot of time in bad habits that was playing video games and now i regret it because i feel at that point if i'd worked harder i would have become grandmaster much sooner so this is the first thing you know value your time because it's limited and like they might now spend time uh, watching videos or scrolling through social media all the time it's okay to do it but not overdo it and later on they will regret it i can tell it from my experience that i do regret wasting a lot of time on video games for example that was one of my worst habits so first uh, tip would be to value their time and put it into something productive try to learn some kind of skill in fact um, there was this video of steve jobs everyone knows who is steve jobs uh, the founder of apple he gave a speech at stanford and one point which he mentioned was that when he was in college he didn't really enjoy those studies but there was this extra curricular class of calligraphy which he took um that point calligraphy was completely a new concept it didn't uh, have any practical value but he thought it's very interesting and he learned it and years later when he founded apple it all came back the knowledge all hit him that oh you know we can have this beautiful font on on the keyboard and he was the first one to do it so immediately learning a skill like calligraphy didn't have any effect but years down the lane it made apple so successful one of the reasons why apple was so successful so it just shows that any skill you learn doesn't really go to waste it always adds up at the end so this is uh, one thing like try to learn some skills um and in lockdown for example people thought that there will be no jobs you know everyone there will be a financial crisis and stuff like this but uh, people always required uh, someone who is skilled at their art so even if they are trying to become a video editor you know it's a skill and we'll always need someone who is uh, very good at their craft so many of the times when they are like in the 12th grade or something they are thinking how will i earn money how will i earn money just develop your skills and even if you're a chess player develop your skills first the money will come it's a by product of it if you're very skilled someone or the other will hire you because they'll require your expertise um and when it comes to chess if they want to particularly improve in chess what i did a lot was i used to solve a lot of tactics so i had a book given by my coach of 1000 puzzles and it was very daunting but my mom used to bribe me that's the best way to work so if i solved few 100 pages of uh, 100 problems i used to get chocolate you know that's how i uh, solved a lot of tactics and that helps pattern recognition for example uh, if i solve same thing again and again next time i immediately see the move i don't even know what my brain thinks i just know the answer so in any field if you do the same thing again and again 
you kind of uh, kind of develop your intuition so i think one thing would be to solve a lot of tactics so a lot of problems and second thing is to uh, play with someone play with a friend or a coach and to analyze the game afterwards doesn't matter if you win or lose but that's when the real progress happens not just by playing yes let's say if we play and if we don't know what we did right or wrong we didn't really learn anything so the habit of learning is very important um, when it comes to chess and right now they are so lucky that there are so many options online to play previously when i started i used to go to my friend's house you know call him up walk all the way but right now they can just play online and they have so many opportunities so they can watch some videos online of people who are expert in the areas they can play chess uh, online so i think these are the basic things actually uh, which one should do um i used to read a lot of chess books as well um, so please suggest some names of the chess uh, chess book because students are literally bombarding me with this questions divya kapoor and mughal sachma okay so they are asking which is the best chess books to use um i think it is said that uh, apart from uh, science uh, chess is one of the fields which has the highest number of books written on Uh, so it's there is huge collection out there, and I don't know what I can suggest from this like plethora of books. But there are some publishers which are very good. Like there is a publisher called Quality Chess, and they have Grandmaster Preparation Series. So literally, from every skill which is required to become a Grandmaster is covered in that. And I think they cannot really go wrong if they take any book of those. And in any field, there will be some expert. uh so there are some expert coaches in the world like mark doretsky uh, his books are great so uh, i would suggest the publisher and the trainer's name rather than just suggesting one book okay so a uh, question we have from a student so which is the best opening for attacking and which is the best for defending uh best opening for attacking is uh first of all any opening you play try to unbalance it right from the start um if it's very symmetrical your opponent will have it easy so unbalance it so any unbalanced openings like sicilian defense uh, or kings indian defense where it's not symmetric um that's one thing and one which is very safe right was the question yeah um exactly the opposite like you know when you play symmetric chess like when the pieces are just very uh, um, similar so to they each are defending attacking defending yeah, yeah. um i think in general for e4 to play e5 is the most uh, solid because you don't give him much chance to create space and if for d4 you play d5 okay so some students uh, are asking So, what do you love to eat? <laughs> um, I love Indian food because I'm a vegetarian. So I don't find any cuisine in the world which has so much variety in vegetarian food as Indian food. So Indian food is the best, and I love uh, to indulge in pizza and pasta. and all italian stuff so pizza is my favorite and uh, it's okay it's junk food but i sometimes still um, have cheat days where i uh, love craving and eating pizza great so um many students are asking about your coach first of all they are asking who is your coach and some students are asking is it very important to have a coach in chess 100% without it's like uh it will accelerate your progress you can do by yourself but having a coach is like a catalyst you know it will just speed up the growth like anything um and i was very lucky in my childhood to get such coaches um it's like uh, it, you're in a dark room and the coach is like a flashlight you know you st- suddenly start seeing things um uh, you can navigate you know you can if you're in dark room you'll try to you know touch the wall you know you'll fall you'll uh, tumble down but if you have a flashlight like a coach who is guiding you you will just see the obstacles in your way and you will navigate it much easier so 
and always i told from my uh, life i have learned one thing is always invest in education always invest it's never an expense so when i was young this coach fees or like you know buying books it was expensive but still it for me it was never really an expense it was always an investment because it will pay much more later on in their lives so when it comes to education never really hesitate in investing because knowledge really never goes to waste i think that's everything we have um so please always invest in whatever you want to learn take a good coach um get books or whatever resources are required don't think that oh it's so expensive should i do it or not um i would say just it's an investment for your better future okay a question from the student if i lost actually you know even i used to play chess in my childhood days and uh, uh, i used to think it as like you know it is the most intelligent uh, people's game and i thought like i am not good enough so one student is asking the question which also had in my mind that is if i lost my queen so he's who is who is you know really powerful right so and i am in uh, weaker position what should i do to gain stronger position um no if you lose queen then it's already very tough because queen is the most powerful piece on the board in fact at top level of chess um it happens that even if you lose one pawn it's a major disadvantage which is the smallest piece so um if you lose any material it's a big big disadvantage already but that being said many times it has happened that even if you're down the game can change at any moment so there are some players in the world who are extremely good at defending they kind of enjoy defending even if they are worse uh, and just it will frustrate your opponent that why is he not resigning you know he's keep finding good moves he's finding good moves and when your opponent is frustrated he will make a mistake so that's what it's that's the sport about you know you keep posing more problems to your opponent uh, and eventually wait for his mistake okay so i guess we are in the end of the session also we have taken enough number of questions from the students and uh, yeah that's it everyone is uh, sending over power over power great <laughs> so that's all for today i hope everyone has uh, enjoyed and also i'm very sure with it also have enjoyed thank you so much with it for joining us and also being patient with all of our students question which was some of them are not irrelevant but funny um so thank you so much uh, hope yeah. we will be uh, having another session with us in practically again yeah. so thank bye you. bye everyone thank you for having me and i would just say that you know it's so nice that so many people were eager to learn and practically is organizing this summer workshop because i remember some of my fondest memories are of summer workshops which i used to do i also learned chess there uh, sometimes so uh it's very nice that there are many areas which people can uh, enhance their skills in now and uh, in the morning there were like so many questions and this enthusiasm of people so i think they have taken the first step and thank you everyone who joined in yeah thank you bye bye